Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Uh, this is part three of the introduction to KiCad from an Eagle user's perspective. If you haven't seen one and two, you probably want to take a look at them. And uh, what we've done so far is uh, we've made this simple schematic. Uh, what we have is a PIC 12F615 processor. I walk through how to make this symbol. And then I use the connector symbols here, P1 and P2, and C1. We did the annotations to add the numbers, and we've chosen a, a footprints for both the processor and the capacitor. But we have yet to choose a footprint for the connector here because I wanted to make that footprint uh, especially for... Um, this video because uh, I would like to make the footprint so it's the locking style if you've ever seen uh, uh, SparkFun's Eagle library. I actually have not dug into the libraries of uh, the of KiCad that far but uh, just as an example I wanted to make that footprint. To do that we come over here and this is the footprint editor. We can go ahead and fire up the footprint editor and again note up here similar to the symbol uh, library that we don't have uh, any active libraries up here. <clears throat> so to rectify that we need to, uh, let's see here, uh, first we want to start a new footprint like that. And we're going to call this uh, 0 0.1 uh, underscore, uh, actually 0 0.1 uh, times 5 underscore lock, just to, to give us some sort of new footprint name. Okay. And I, I don't remember if I mentioned this in... Uh, uh, the video I did on the uh, symbol, but what's awesome about KiCad and Eagle doesn't do this very well, is that the reference designator down here and the uh, the name of the part are already placed for you. They're on the correct layers. Everything's taken care of. You don't have to <coughs> excuse me. You don't have to mess with it at all. Well, the uh, once these guys are displayed, you can use the M key. If I hit M, I can go ahead and move these around, and I'll move this over here, and then hit M and move this down here just to get them out of our way. Uh, the scroll wheel zooms you in and out, and uh, pushing on the uh, uh, center button or the scroll wheel button, whatever you want to call it, allows you to pan around like this. Uh, we are already in inches, and that's what I wanted to use because we're going to use uh, point 0.1 headers. <coughs> and if we look over here on the right, we can see all of our different layers here. And the some of the tools, you know, you have the delete items. We have set origin for point of grid, which is, I haven't used this one, but it looks fairly uh useful you have the anchor which allows you to set where the uh where the center point for lack of a better word of your part is you have some drawing tools which these allow you to do your graphics for your silk screen and then you have your add paths but we before we do anything else we need to do some library stuff and this is annoying for lack of a better word but let's go ahead and do it anyway uh now that we've created a new part, we still have no active library, so what we can do here is create a new library and save the current footprint. Like that. Uh, the... <clears throat> Let's see here. I want to go... Uh, for this uh, example, I'm going to make a local library, which the uh, file path is already set. Uh, to do and uh, what we want to do, uh, what we want to do here is add uh, another let's just call it a uh, lib oh, no. let's call it con lib dot pretty and uh, the footprint libraries for uh, 
CHICAD, if you look down here, have a dot pretty extension. So now that we've created this uh, conlib dot pretty, we can hit OK. Uh, but we still don't have an active library. Well, the next thing you have to do is you have to use the footprint libraries wizard to uh, add the library to the libraries of uh, KiCad. From what you can tell in this uh, wizard is that KiCad libraries are actually uh, loaded from GitHub. And uh, the standard libraries come out of the uh, you know github.com slash kicad, but for our purposes, we're going to uh, make this a local library, so files on my computer. Go ahead and hit next, and you can uh, navigate over to where the uh, library is. Let's see here, C drive, users, Igor, that's me. Uh, Dropbox, I like to keep all my stuff in Dropbox, hardware, 2017 projects, like that, audio mixer board, I'm sorry, this is going to be the PIC 12F615 project, and here's my conlib uh, pretty library. Go ahead and hit next. This just shows you that uh, conlib was recognized as a KiCad library, and everything is okay, you can go ahead and hit next. We want to add this to the current library. Uh, if you add this to the global configuration, this library is visible to all projects. And I actually found a sort of a bug in this. Uh, once you do run through this wizard once to add it to the global library uh, configuration, you actually have to restart KiCad for it to show up. I kind of pulled my hair out about that. But for this one, we want to add it to the current project only and hit finish. So now that we did that, uh, we can go ahead and select an active library. And uh, I don't remember where. Yep, it puts it all the way at the end here. Conlib. This is the one we just did and hit OK. So now this connector is going to be in our active library, Conlib. And we can go ahead and save it like that. All right, now that we've got all the uh, uh, paperwork, so to speak, out of the way. Let's go ahead and actually create our footprint. And the first thing I want to do is I want to change our grid. So you can right-click and go Grid Select. And I want to do a, <clears throat> uh, a standard grid. And let's see here. I want to do a standard grid of 50 mils, like that. And so what this grid does for us, and actually let me go ahead and move the reference designator out of our way, is that every two spaces we get a, uh, a pad. And now we want to grab a pad. Now that we've grabbed our pad, you can see that the cursor has become a tool. And you can go ahead and click somewhere, and we're going to click on the origin here. And a pad is going to show up. And you're going to go, well... Uh, from the pre this uh, uh, from previous things that you've seen of KiCad, shouldn't a dialog have popped up? And the way the uh, the footprint editor works slightly differently from like the uh, layout or the uh, sorry for the symbol or the uh, schematic. And once you've dropped your first pad here, we can go ahead and hit uh, hover a mouse over it and hit E, and it'll bring up the dialog here that shows you all of the uh, parts and pieces of it. Or you can right-click on it and go Edit Pad from the menu. It's nice that it shows you the shortcuts right on there. The reason, actually, let me close out of this. The reason why they uh, drop the pad immediately after you select it will become clear here in a second after we uh, edit our first pad. We'll go ahead, E, and we want to now go ahead and uh, set some uh, sizes here. We want our hole to be... Uh, 40 mils like that we want our size to be 74 mils like that which is a pretty good size and what we want to do in the X position we want to offset it actually let's let's leave the offset alone for now and uh, a couple of things about this menu you can see that uh, on the technical layers, the F mask and B mask, which is the front mask and back mask, are selected. And so on this pad, 
uh, the the solder mask will be pulled back both on the top layer and bottom layer, the front and back, as they like to call them in KiCad. Okay, so we're going to hit OK. And now when we grab a pad, let me scroll up and go to the next one here and drop it down. Let's go ahead and hit E to edit. You can see that it kept all the settings for my previous pad. This is very, very convenient to work with. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and close out of that, and now we can place our... Oh, sorry, i got to grab the tool again. We can place our third, fourth, and fifth pad. Something very, very important about KiCad is that these pad numbers, and see how they're very, very deliberately and clearly displayed for you. These are very important because these pad numbers are going to then link up with the uh, pin numbers that you created in your symbol. <clears throat> Now that we've got our five pads here laid out, we can go ahead and do some tweaking. So the first thing is we're going to make this number one square. And this is done in, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, this is done in the shape. And we want to make it a rectangle like that to signify uh, that this is <clears throat> a square pad. And if we look in this, we have your circular, your oval, your rectangle, or rectangle, Euler, and trapezoidal, which are different shapes. The next question you might have is in the menu over here, you see that there's only a single button for pad. How do I do other things like holes or a surface mount pads? Well, very simply, this is done in this menu. Through hole gives you a through hole pad. SMD here, C turns it into a surface mount pad. I'm not sure what connector does, actually. I have never used this one. And NT, uh, NPTH Mechanical it stands for Non-Plated Through Hole, which is just a regular hole. But for the regular hole, you want to make them, uh, let's see here, uh, not oval, circular. And then you want to uh, take the size, the drill size, and make it the same size as the, the pad here. But anyway, we want to go through hole and we want to go rectangular and we want to change the position to 0 0.005 because we're going to do a zigzag pattern to make the thing locking and we're going to uh, inter exchange them in the X direction like that. So you can see that now this pad is slightly over to the right. You can see that the mouse snaps to the center. And the pad is slightly to the right. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to uh, make this pad minus 0.005. Hit OK, and this pad is going to be slightly to the left. And we're going to keep doing that for all of them. And again, I'm hitting E to bring up the edit menu. Like that. Hit E again. Minus 0.005. Did I do the fourth one? Yeah. And then finally hit E again. I'm going to do plus 0 0.005 like that. Okay. And you can see now that the pads, the through hole pads here are now doing a zigzag pattern going to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Like that. Now we want to go ahead and do a silk screen around this to show you where stuff is. And the first thing I want to do is I want to change our grid size. And I want to make it 25 mils, like that. <clears throat> and to do our silk screen, we're going to use this guy to do a graphic line, like that. And the silk screen for this is actually pretty simple, like that. And what's kind of nice, if you want to call it that, uh, I, I enjoy this feature, that this line just kind of keeps going like that, it makes the silk screen really easy to do. Go ahead and work our silk screen all the way around, like that. Something to note, if you look on the right here, you can see which is the active layer that I'm working on, and that's signified by this little diamond here. And I'm on the F silks layer, 
which is the top silkscreen layer or the front silkscreen layer. And once we're done, you can double click to finish the line like that. <coughs> so now that we've got all that set up, we can go ahead and move our name. So if I hit M to move, I can then hit R to rotate it. And let's say put the name over here and then hit M again to rotate this and R, I'm sorry, M to grab it and then R to rotate it and put the reference designator here. And now we're all done with our uh, oh, footprint here. Let's go ahead and save it like that. It's going to verify the name for you like that. And we are all done. Now that we're done uh, setting up the footprint, we can go ahead and close out of the footprint editor. And we can go back to uh, CVPCB to associate our components. Go ahead and load that up. And let's see here, we're looking for our library. Did it, yep, I put it all the way at the bottom here. Conlib, like that. Oh, why? oh there we go. So here is our 1. Uh, 1. 0. 0.1 times 5 locking connector. Go ahead and add those like that. And save it. And now all of the parts in our library have been associated and we can go ahead and jump over to the PCB, which we can uh, run from here. And their PCB editor is called a uh, new PCB. And when we go ahead and hit this button, we will load into the PCB editor. <clears throat> As you can see, since we loaded in the PCB editor, there's nothing here. And unlike Eagle, which uh, throws everything in already, uh, KaiCan doesn't have this association that the new PCB and a schema, the schematic editor, are separate. After we've loaded the uh, PCB new, we need to import the, or read the netlist like that. And there really shouldn't be anything you need to change. All the paths are set for automatically and we can hit read netlist. And apparently we have errors because we are missing things. Hmm, where did, oh, that's where I went wrong. We need to regenerate the netlist. Like that. What is, oh, sorry, netlist, generate netlist, save. There we go. And now we need to go back to uh, PCB new and go ahead and read the current netlist. There we go. See, now everything came through correctly. Forgot that one step. Got to regenerate the netlist. Uh, go ahead close and you can see all of our components are now let me zoom into that are sitting in here and they're all kind of sitting on top of each other which uh we will uh, deal with that in the next video uh, as always uh thank you for watching if you have any comments or questions you're always uh, welcome to put them down below and in the next video, we're going to go ahead and route this board. Uh, the next video is probably going to be kind of lengthy because uh, KiCad has a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, different routing, uh, uh, a lot of different ways to route and a lot of uh, routing features.